What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful new year. Um, I know I just chilled at the house and I was just ready to get back to work to be honest. But um, let's go ahead and get into our first setup here. So we're going to be looking at Elsid. I really like this falling wedge here. You can see it's breaking out slightly. Um, it wasn't really a crazy increase of volume when it broke out, but I still feel like it could be worth a watch. Maybe we'll see it move up to 789 first. I need to see what it does from there before going any higher. But I mean, I could just see it, you know, maybe curling up about there, reject about there. And then, you know, if it does what more, obviously that 789 is going to need to get cleared. So I'm looking at calls on that. Last week we had a we had a lot of call setups last week, but the market really went nowhere. Um, so I'm hoping this week will be a little bit better because, uh, I mean, there really wasn't that many great setups last week. The index has stayed in a range and I mean, it, it just, it could have been better. So let's go ahead and get into number two here. Um, we're looking at PayPal, similar setup. Uh, I mean, if you drew a trend line here, pretty much looks like a falling wedge as well, um, just like Elsid, but maybe not as tight. Um, the one thing you're going to want to see PayPal do here is get over the 71.17 level. It's going to run up maybe to major resistance at 77.81, assuming that it can catch some bullish momentum. And you can see it's just a straight sell inbounds area in this area. Then it comes up to the 50 EMA as well as the 77.81. So I can see it running up about there and, you know, finding resistance about there. If you want, um, set an alert maybe, make sure this area doesn't break or, you know, make sure it is reclaiming with assurance that it's getting over that 71.17. And if we zoom this out a little bit so the volume's on the way, that 71.17 comes from this pivot right here. You can see that pivot low from this earnings. Um, made support here, broke. And um, yeah, I mean, you can just see why this 71.17 could be important to reclaim. So yeah, I'm looking at calls on that as well. If you want to stay conservative, just stick to day trades, you know, same as usual. If you're going to swing trade, obviously 30 to 60 days of expiration is going to be your best bet. Um, and you know, you're not going to take all of these. The goal of this video and every week's video is to let you look at five different ones, see which one maybe looks best to you, maybe pick one or two of them or something so you don't overwhelm yourself. And then you can go ahead and, you know, try to enter and make sure your risk profile is set out. You have um, a stop loss and all that good stuff. So remember, this is just like ideas. It's not like a, a suggestion or financial advice or anything. We're just playing the technicals and I'm sharing my ideas with you. So just always remember that and always remember to manage risk. So looking at calls, Elsid and PayPal, um, the volume is pretty good. I mean, these are pretty liquid names. The option chain usually has high uh, volume and open interest, so that could be good. I just like to pay attention to more liquid assets because, you know, you can exit out of the option sooner, the spreads aren't as wide, and, you know, you can go ahead and exit nice. So we're going to go into Home Depot, ticker symbol HD. So you can see, I mean, clear head and shoulders, right? Bearish pattern. Um, one thing the bears do have going against them is this uptrend line. So there is always um, a vulnerability of it curling up. You know the trend line heading back up to supply so what we're going to be doing is not entering this right away or anything we're going to be waiting for the neckline to break first to confirm the head and shoulders and that would give you you know about what is that 311.50 support so when 311.50 support breaks you can pretty much confirm that the neckline will go ahead and break down and you could enter put so we're going to add alert a horizontal trend line we'll name it breakdown uh, slash neckline and that would go ahead and give you an alert to wait for so you can wait for this to set up um, if you were any more bullish this week on the market i mean this trend line could be good to play off of maybe for short-term calls or something uh, i just really i don't like the head and shoulders pattern you know head and shoulders obviously you got your first shoulder you got a higher high making a peak you got a second shoulder and eventually it can break down and i'm sure a lot of you have you know seen these play out time and time again um, i think the daily time frame is really uh, useful uh, finding these kind of patterns i think they're more successful than if you were to like you know take something intraday you know you see a five minute head and shoulders you're prone to get fake out but with the one day and the four hour and the hourlies i feel like these patterns are just more reliable as well as trend lines and support and resistance just much more reliable when you're focusing on the daily level so that's why we're doing that but yeah so this 311.50 area is going to be your area of focus you're going to wait for that to break down before entering anything so this is kind of playing the waiting game on this setup um LCID and paypal obviously you do have to confirm breakouts so maybe you don't have to wait for those but maybe i mean you could wait for a dip maybe maybe wait for a back test or something and always wait for confirmation you know don't, don't just enter and get fomo just because you see something right at monday's open pay attention to the first 50 minutes make sure that cash open is good people are you know buying and supporting your thesis that it's going to go up or down before entering something you know that first 15 minutes you know sometimes it'll establish a range it creates your opening range you could trade the opening range breakout yeah i mean it's a good time to focus on the first 15 minutes before entering something so that's just a little tip you know if you are day trading or trying to learn how to enter stuff better maybe just wait the first 15 minutes you know don't you don't always have to just jump into something 
wait for something to confirm your bias, let the algos and Wall Street hash it out the first 15 minutes because it can get a little crazy, right? The volume's picking up, market on open orders are flooding in from Wall Street, and it could create a lot of volatility and it would be a little overwhelming. So yeah, just remember that. Maybe wait the first 15 minutes, like I said. But yeah, 311.50 is the focus, looking at puts on this. Next, we're gonna go into EEM. So this is the Emerging Markets Index. Oh, it's ETF. Really nice volume, 24-7. I mean, this is like 38 million shares, and you can see it, it's a liquid asset. So I really like this one um, in terms of trading the emerging market. So with this is a head and shoulders, similar to HD, which you just saw. You got the left shoulder, creates a peak, even rejected off supply up there, you can see comes back down, makes a second shoulder, but this one is unconfirmed as well. Um, if you really wanted to be sure, we're gonna set an alert at 37.35, do the same thing, breakdown slash neckline. And that's gonna be your confirmation for puts on the bearish setup. So you'll wanna see a breakdown, back test the line, back test the neckline maybe, cause obviously it's not just gonna go straight down all the time. I mean, it, it can, but and then maybe head back down to demand. So that's what I'm looking at on EEM. Um, just wait for that 37.35 level to break. We set an alert, so it'll be ready for when that happens. Um, obviously, if you're bearish, you're still vulnerable to support. It can, you know, chop around at support, it can bounce off there yeah i mean you just want to see you know some confirmed action confirming your bias and that 37 35 would confirm your neckline break and that comes from this pivot over here next we'll go into clf so i really like this one for puts obviously it's got a clear gap right here um had a major gap of found trend line resistance so i was thinking maybe it could feel the gap back down test the lower trend line we're gonna try to probably curl up about there after the gap is closed and after the trend line has been tested so that could be a good one i would probably focus more on a day trade for this one just because the, the gap's like not huge or anything so the only thing it would be huge on is if it filled you know in the first day that would be a big drop i mean you can see we'll go to the info line if it filled the whole gap uh 4.73 percent return but just on shares so i mean with options you know price that in clf can have a little bit higher implied volatility so the premiums could be a little higher but i really feel like this could be worth for a day trade especially if you caught a five percent move for the gap fill i mean those puts can pay really nice and then what you're doing is just using the lower trend line as a projection for your price target we do this a lot in our setups we you know maybe take something counter trend and then we'll aim for the lower trend line in the channel or up trend line whatever it has and then exit about there we did it with like netflix i think it was like two weeks ago and i mean we do it a lot so if you ever you know want to go back and watch some of those and you know mark the time periods and see how it did afterwards it could give you some educational value all you're doing is just using this lower trend line as your projection target so nothing too difficult focusing on the gap you got 200 ema rejection here you got your 200 ema um only thing going against you macd is still positive kdj is trying to curl down but it hasn't flipped red yet like you see in this one so once that kdj flips red i mean that is a good signal that the market might be curling down um, on the short term so kdj will flip signals faster than macd macd kind of smooths out the fall signals i think so you can see it stayed in the buy signal here for longer, uh, waited a second and flipped red before the KDJ flipped red. KDJ flipped red first, I'm sorry, and then the MACD came in and flipped. You can see it does give early sell signals, early buy signals. Uh, so I think the KDJ is more of like a short term, kind of a short term indicator to you know see where the market trend is going to flip. So yeah, looking at puts on that. We'll go through it again. LSID, we're looking at calls. PayPal, looking at calls. HD. Waited for confirmation on puts. I think it was like 311 and 50 cents or something. So 311.50 was your neckline. EEM, we're waiting for that, what is that, 37.50 or something. Um, we're waiting for that neckline to break. And then CLF, I mean, you, you want to see this gap fill. So maybe you want to see uh, selling on the cash open first. Maybe take out Friday's low. So if we go into the hourly here, we got OCD. You need to get rid of that. Let's say it wants to take out Friday's low. That could be your signal to go ahead and take a trade on the gap fill down. That would be at 1593. So we'll set an alert there too. We'll do Friday's low slash gap fill. So once that uh, Friday's low gets taken out, that's when you will have the confirmation that's going to go ahead and start filling down. We'll always wait for that. We're setting these confirmation levels first before entering stuff. You know, sometimes these are going to hit and you're going to get your entry point, and sometimes you're not. But that's the beauty of just waiting for confirmation so you don't rush in. And, you know, I'd rather be late you know, than early sometimes, to be honest. Because when I'm early, you gotta deal with a lot of chop. Sometimes you'll, you know, deal with it just bouncing between support and resistance. That's no fun to get caught in unless you're selling premium. So yeah, just wait for that confirmation level first. I mean, it's, it's gonna give you a little bit more peace of mind, maybe. You know, there's obviously gonna be fake outs when it does break down sometimes, but either way, I feel like you're getting, you know, a better entry point most of the time, just because you're waiting and you're being patient. Next, we'll go into the indexes. So this is the SPY. Last week, we were just focused on this demand zone low 
So add a major support back here, a 390. That's pretty much our focus level. If you're bullish, you do want it to reclaim the 390. So it's the same thing as last week. I mean, we literally went nowhere. This was Friday's close from last week. This is where we closed this Friday. I did say we had a very good argument for counter trend reversal uh, on Tuesday. Just because we we're pulling against the demand zone, you can see it did rip for a couple days. Was not able to get back over 3090. Also stayed under the 50 EMA, MACD stayed in a negative signal, KDJ stayed in a negative signal. So, I mean, you could just see, one could even argue that this is kind of like a bear flag. I mean, if you did this and this, I mean, what does that look like to you? <laughs> I mean, it looks like a bear flag, but unconfirmed. So either it's going to pop out of the pendant to the upside, or it's going to pop down and break the bear flag and confirm it. So with these kind of pendants, the thing is, is that they are bilateral. So when they're bilateral, they can go either way, which is why you wait for confirmation for one of them to break. I don't know if you've ever seen the symmetrical wedge. It's kind of like that. So you can get faked out if you don't wait. You know, somebody might be entering in here thinking, oh, it's a bear flag, it's gonna break down. And then next thing you know, it's popping out of the pendant and ripping to the upside because it broke out. So that's, some, that's one thing you wanna do, just wait for the, you know, the trend line to get broken out. You can see why I didn't want to go short here last week. I was saying uh, I, I want to be careful shorting down here. I mean, it's just, this is demand zone just holding like glue, chopping around. You know, we didn't go anywhere last week. So I'd say that was a good warning for us, honestly. I mean, to not go crazy with anything especially puts because I mean just look at this giant wick you know look at these little candles every time it gets down here it just rips so this is a demand zone obviously an accumulation area people are adding Wall Street institutions so you want to be careful with that we got Kitty J's crossing up for spots so that's good but otherwise you're gonna be waiting for this little pennant to either break in either direction so I don't really have any reading for you right now maximum I got you at 390 or uh, last week's high which is 387.41 maximum I, you know I can put you at demand zone low but until uh, if you're bearish, of course, but until, you know, one of those breaks, I can't put you any higher. So those are your, pretty much your focus levels. Same as last week, same general area. Next, we'll go into the QQQ. So this is the NASDAQ. I was feeling a little bit more bearish on this one last week, and that was because of this trend line breaking. I was showing you last week, you know, this looked a little bit worse than SPY because this trend line was freshly broken, and it did sell off into Tuesday instantly for like two days until it hit this lower support, perfect. So bears, you know, if you were able to catch this trend line breakdown, you probably ate for a couple of days and did good. And I was feeling a little bit more bearish on QQQ, but a little bit more neutral on SPY, and you could see exactly why, because of the fresh trend line break, and you do have this little low here to be tested eventually. SPY, I mean, it was, you know, right in demand, it was looking like it would be more uh, neutral, consolidated. I would say QQQ, I mean, it, it got tore up for a couple of days before, you know, able to find a bottom. So this week, I'm not really seeing anything specific we go down to the four hour there was like some sort of it's kind of like a wedge right did this and you can see it you know it broke out for a couple days but otherwise i mean i mean right in the same spot uh, is when it broke out so not really seeing anything clear on that you can maybe argue that the falling wedge could turn into something although i would have liked to see quicker follow through on that one thing you do have going for you for the bulls is a 259.08 support holding maximum like you know i could put bulls up at you know the trend line and supply Probably back test about there and I can see resistance per usual. But the same thing as last week. Bulls, if you want to see it, you know, do anything major, you're gonna to need to reclaim and invalidate the trend line as well as the supply. So this is a fresh supply zone. This just created a sell imbalance. Uh, so something happened in this day to lead to this. And that's the focus level uh, when you get up there. So yeah, I'm not really seeing anything specific on the QQQ. Bulls have a good argument that it's holding 359 pretty well. Could run up the supply, but maximum, you know, I could put you there. Bears, if it did want to break down, obviously. So you need to get under 259 which is that support and then maybe go down to the 254 52 week low that's about as low as i can you know about as low as i can go because i got to see how it reacts to the area first so keeping your targets you know tight not you know over expecting from the market usually i mean it's you know it's going to make you feel a lot better than if you're shooting for the sky or you know shooting for hell which would be way way lower yeah that's the qqq spy obviously you're going to want to wait for the pennant uh qqq did have a small falling wedge but Otherwise, you know, you just want to see this 259 focus level and then the supply. If it did get up there, you'd need to watch carefully. Next, we're going to the IWM. Same thing as last week. So this 174.11, it did break down briefly, but now it's just chopping at the area. We're going to want to see it, you know, to stay over the 174.11. Obviously, it made a new support low here at 170, but otherwise, I mean, it, it looks the same. I mean, it pretty much looks similar to the spot. If you just drew like a little pennant here, you'd be waiting for it to do something out of here. I mean, if you went down to the one hour, it gives you a little bit more clear of like a wedge. So it gives you a little bit more of a clear wedge formation. Um, you can see uh, it would need to break out of this for the bulls. If it did want to break out, you want to see it, you know, break out 
back test where it probably try to head up into the 1 hour 200 EMA or even this 176. So that's another thing with IWM, but otherwise, I mean, it could see the trend line resistance here if it doesn't get over. So that's just something to be mindful of if you do trade the IWM. Um, I know a lot of people uh, in X trades like to trade it, so. It's a good liquid asset. It's got good options. It moves nice. It does have sometimes a different effect than the SPY and QQQ because you are trading the small mid cap. So yeah, just watch this upper trend line on the one hour uh, daily. Obviously, that same 174.11. I'll even separate the color because this is a different level. Um, this is a daily level. You want to see it stay over 174.11. And then these are kind of like your, uh, this is your low. And then uh, this is your weekly, what is that? Uh, December 21st high. So you need to see that um, get taken out as well for the bolt. Otherwise, just be careful of the tread line. Wait for it to break out. If you're going to take calls or anything, puts, you know, for bears might have a good argument here just make sure it stays within the trend line if not you know go ahead and stop out because it could get squeezy on the short term next we'll go into the vix and i just wanted to throw that out there uh we're not going to have the seasonality on the on the video this week uh, season axe did turn off their free option for the s p 500 and i don't have a membership with them so sorry about that if you want just go to the watchlist channel and options watchlist in our x trades discord and go ahead and um just click on my almanac page if you want to see like a little you know historical outlook on the market i can tell you that the first trading day i believe for the new year does average about i think the last 20 out of 25 years was an up day so we'll see that doesn't mean it's going to happen or anything 2022 is a completely different year so we know we got rising interest rates fed is you know pretty much trying to slow down the economy so you gotta be careful you know trading off seasonality realize it's just data it's not 100 percent or anything but it, you know it could give you a small little outlook and maybe you know confirm your bias a little bit but yeah so here's the vix so i'll go into the data real quick uh after friday's close of 2166 it did bring our average down to 2568 so this is our average close for 2022 this is every single close of the year i'm gonna have to start tracking one for 2023 now so this is our closing volatility average which is crazy i mean 2568 is very elevated usually you're seeing the vix you know you know averaging way lower than that and if you go to any website and compare it to each year you'll see how elevated this is by a percentage basis it's crazy really went nowhere last week though i mean we're still in the same range uh i got the same levels as before bears you want to see it you know start curling back up headed back up to the 2022 average we obviously have major resistance up there as well as the, the moving averages um if you're bullish on stocks you want to see it go lower down into the 19 but honestly that's where i'd maybe start looking at spy puts is when it gets down low like that you know starting to go short the spy when the vix you know gets around 20 has been a very you know profitable strategy and there's even data to prove that just for 2022 of course any other time i mean i, I can't really speak for that but just speaking in terms of 2022 you gotta realize it was a midterm year and we were you know having rate hike go on a lot so we I mean, must have the fed raise raise rates you know at least five or six different times so um definitely is going to put pressure on corporate profits it's going to you know put pressure on the middle class i mean these guys dictate our money supply so <laughs> you got to be really careful uh, betting against them or you know even betting with them because they will move the market but yeah so you see i mean just the 1994 you could just round that up to 20 is their focus level you know uh, bulls are want to see that to hold if it does get down there I'm personally probably looking at loading puts for a swing 30 to 60 days out when it gets down here. I've just been waiting for the VIX to do something. And it just hasn't done anything. It's just been chopping. So we have yeah, bears. I mean, obviously, um, when it gets up to the 2022 average close, that'd be your that'd be your mean regression target probably to take profit on put. Because you don't know what it's going to do up here. And there is a good chance it will reject. If they wanted to reclaim over the 2022 average close, you know, that could be good for you to, you know, take more puts. But first you want to see it, uh, volatility get elevated and you want to see it above app. So what I'll probably do this year, I'll probably carry over this average, you know, just to see since, you know, since they started raising rates in 2022, I want to see how volatility is um, going to be affected by that and how the economy is going to affect it as well. So I feel like it'll be smart to keep 2022 um, in its own thing. But then you know roll it over to 2023 in the data so we can keep a consistent average uh you know volatility so yeah that's probably what i'll do and then we'll also start a separate you know 2023 volatility uh average just so we have a chart where you can see you know how it's doing next we're going to the dxy so i was personally looking for more upside on the dxy last week it did not do that you can see it's just been chopping in this channel i feel like it had a really good case to you know go to the upper trend line and reject about there but it didn't even do that it really didn't even do much last week but now it's just testing 103.44 support it seems so if you're 
bearish on stocks so you're gonna want to see this hold up otherwise i mean equities can go pretty crazy otherwise if you're bullish you're gonna see this 103 area get broken we're probably headed out into 103 flat where i get 103 flat from is this let me just remove this channel real quick make this more clear so i get that 103 level from this little peak here so this is a 2022 peak when covid hit i would probably try to test about there and maybe try to hold up about there to be honest so if that 103.44 support does break i would really focus on this 2020 peak from when covid came um you can see that's what it peaked and then you know the fed came in and came in with unlimited money printing for policy and it just t totally destroyed our dollar so but now i mean you can see i mean all years it's been going crazy but this is an extremely important level i think you want to see it hold if you're a bear if it went back under that could be really good for stock that's pretty much my outlook for dxy just make sure that uh, we go back to the one day make sure that you know short term one of three forty four holds otherwise i mean it could get you know ugly for bears so i hope everybody enjoyed this video happy new year let's have a great start to q1 just trade safe you know maybe you know start small before entering any large positions because uh, i mean a lot of trends can be waiting to get established here going into the new year. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trades YouTube channel. I love you guys, and I'm out.